So uh, I was asked by the organizer to see, talk about some, I guess, new ideas in recent years appearing in arithmetic aspect of Nonland's program and uh, hopefully give some motivation, background motivation for some other talks uh, in next and uh, the third week. So uh, I will try to uh, so I'll, uh, start with some, uh, I guess I, I won't touch many details and, uh, you know, like hopefully just uh, come with some general ideas and uh, why such new things are useful. Okay, so uh, let's start with introduction. So, uh, let's see, so consider the classical Langlands program, Langlands correspondence, let me see. As far as uh, uh, I understand, it's roughly speaking, you consider a uh, G over F is a, is a reductive group over a global field. You want to consider the following. The, the goal is to establish the follow, sort of a bijection of two sets. One is the automorphic representations of the group G. And uh, the, uh, the other side is the so-called Langlands Lung, parameters. I mean, depends on convention. Some people say G, some people say G hat, G check. And, the, and the, there should be some way to relate them. More, rough, very roughly speaking, bijection, given by so-called reciprocity law. And uh, such bijection is not an arbitrary bijection, but they should respect to some certain finer structure, like namely from the automorphic side, you will get the so-called spectral data, and the, the, on the arithmetic side, you will get the so-called arithmetic data. Langland's dual side. Okay. And like this bijection upstairs is like highly hypothetic, but the downstairs, there's a precise way to relate them by the so-called Satake isomorphism. But uh, now, nowadays, uh, I guess there actually, at least for me, there actually this question is what are automorphic forms? So, well, actually, nowadays, there, as far as I understand, there are actually three things, different, basically different theories. And uh, uh, I guess people usually mix them up, but uh, I would uh, think they are really different things. And, uh, uh, but of course there is common intersection with each other, but um, let me just uh, mention what, what, is it, what do I mean by three different things. So first of all, there's usually the complex theory of automorphic Forms. I think this is actually a theory Langlands originally uh, tried to develop and imagine. This, uh, so basically here, pe people are basically studying representation. So the so-called automorphic representations are basically representations of the, the, the Adel group G of AF on some space of functions that on this uh, space G of uh, uh, C of G. We are seeing this sort of space of functions could be some kind of smooth functions or L2 functions and so on and so forth. Okay, so. And uh, I'm, I'm listing these three things, in, uh, uh, I guess, according to the, uh, the order it appears. The second uh, is, uh, I would say, the algebraic theory. So. Where people are studying like the something like the uh, you know 
holomorphic modular forms or ad adric automorphic forms in, a, in some precise meaning, it's sort of some uh, Uh, such thing is kind of precise a subset of all the uh, automorphic forms in this sense, but it also somehow started something more like the cohomology appearing in some, uh, like for example, Bede et al. or co coherent cohomology. Of something like Shimura varieties, which were uh, discussed in pr previous lectures, or moduli of Stukas. Uh, and maybe locally symmetric, general locally symmetric spaces. So on and so forth. And uh, actually, the cohomology could be really, you know, complex value co with coefficient in C or QL or some even torsion coefficient, so on and so forth. So there are not uh, actually uh, completely overlap, but the large portion of uh, algebraic theory is uh, is is a subset of uh, of. Uh, Never figure out what's the order to how to use this or uh, well, the blackboard in correct order. Okay, so maybe then later on to uh, I think the another thing uh, the, the other part of the theory developed actually only in, I mean it appears I guess later is the so-called periodic theory which study so-called periodic mod modular form, or periodic automorphic forms. And uh, uh, completed cohomology. So on and so forth. Uh, so this part also contains a large part of algebraic theory, but uh, as far as I understand, not all. For example, some, some like mass forms or there we don't know whether there's some periodic uh, automorphic theory could uh, attach them. Okay, so uh, any questions? Oh, so, I, I, I would say mass forms are also not changing the form of your form of variety. Uh, they, it, it, yeah, it's but as algebraic automorphic form in precise sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I mean, I I would say like uh, none of them contains each other, but the largely more or less two would be one intersected with three in, inside. Like or maybe two is like not intersection, but the methods from complex theory and the practice theories are used to in all these algebraic. Okay, so I, I would really like to distinguish it. There are different things. And, uh, uh, but it's just because like, for example, complex method is also used a lot in the, in the, in the algebraic method theory or periodic method is also used here. So, uh, so then what are the, once we know this, what the automorphic form now I can talk, what are the, uh, the maybe put here. The Langland parameters. Actually, of G. Well, so in the case one, simply I don't know. I mean, of, of course, there's a, some hypothetic thing like the the uh, Langlands has some vision of this, some Langlands group there, but um, I mean, it's it's a little bit uh, unclear for me what is the nature of uh, really this. The second uh, case, I think this is more or less one should think about it. Uh, 
Langland's parameters should be the homomorphisms from the so-called motivic Galois group of F to maybe uh, the so-called the C group of, uh, of G, which is kind of like a slight uh, enhancement of the do G hat in a proper sense. You probably need to. Uh, so this is a motivic Galois group. Huh? This, of course, this one is still uh, conjectural existence, but I think the, its nature is uh, more clear, at least to me. It's say pro algebraic group, and this morphism should be just the uh, algebraic representations. Could, could you repeat the question? I, I, could, I simply couldn't hear. The motives defined over F. Yes. OK. Uh, well, and uh, part three. People, I guess, more or less agree, although I'm not experts, but uh, there are experts in the room, which I guess, but more or less agree this should be just the Galois representations. Maybe. Okay, of course, up to some conjugacy. To conjugacy. <coughs> and uh, somehow, algebraic theory, embed, in some sense, embeds into this. Uh, uh, complex theories, uh, if you take the, let's say, C point of motivic Galois group, which is sort of some pro D group or pro -lo locally finite group, there should be something like Langland's group mapped to it. And the motivic Galois group, when you base change to uh, QP, it's always equipped with a map of Galois group into it. And then you pre compose, you get. You get this theory, but uh, I mean, if 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 you are like don't like the theory of motives or whatever, you can also replace some replacement is like some kind of compatible system of uh, Galois representations, for example. Okay. There would be conditions for all of these, right? For this one, I, I mean, basic continuous representation, yeah? What, what do you mean by, what are the? Huh? Oh, almost everywhere unramified, of course, yeah, and the continuous. Right? This doesn't, I think, you count all the more periodic thing. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, right, so now I can see what's the, uh, uh, so, so more or less, I will basically, again, as I said, because we don't know what the motivic Galois groups are, we will also think about this in terms of Galois representations. But now, the, the basic idea, the, the sort of the idea, CG is a, as I said, it's kind of a slight variant of uh, L group, L, LG, which actually I think behave better in, in, in the algebraic content. Oh, but uh, yes, but Fazaji introduced such C, this is introduced by Fazaji, yeah, C group. Okay, so, uh, so then the Idea, actually, I would say this. I want to sort of advertise 
is you go from the original, as I mentioned at the beginning, the original state statement of Langlands pro go of the Langlands correspondence is the bijection of two sets. And now we want to move from the set of Langlands parameters. Then go to the, I mean, the first step actually already appears for a long time. This is called the, move to the so-called the cost moduli space of, of the, uh, of the uh, of Langlands parameters, Langlands parameters, which appears actually in the form like so called the deformation ring of Galois representation, or maybe people call pseudo deformation ring. And then one can go one step further. Basically, the, the basic idea is the set of Langlands parameters. It's not just a set. They form a sort of some moduli space. Then you can talk about the, the, the its ring of regular functions, or in some sense, on this space. But then one can, but the, we should not stop here. And the, the, we should move also to the moduli space itself. Which allows us to talk about the discuss the so called the coherent shifts on it. Okay. Or maybe I should, because this word will appear later on in any case, so I probably would need to talk about the derived moduli space of uh, Langlands parameters. So, uh, so in the, the, the original, in this original framework, we are talking about basically the uh, set of automorphic representations. So this is actually, as far as I understand, like much of the summer school uh, are concerning at the moment, until this moment, where all the, most of the statements are about the, talk about the sets. But uh, somehow, actually, you move to the next stage already appears uh, you know, for a long time. Because once you move to the deformation ring, you can talk about the Heck algebra, which sort of controls uh, uh, the, the uh, like automorphic representations, or maybe in the local case, smooth representation of periodic groups, or maybe or in the local ca case, maybe we'll talk about the Bernstein center. So on so forth. And uh, actually, uh, you know, one of the big success uh, is this uh, modularity lifting theorem in, is uh, actually you need to establish some isomorphism here to de deduce uh, bijection uh, upstairs. So, uh, and then we can go, go further. So if we move to the, the whole stack of Langlands parameters, talk about the coherent shifts, we probably need to talk about some categories of uh, representations. Or maybe some like, uh, we should consider the cohomology as uh, cohomology. As, I mean, this idea again actually already appears like the, as, as modules over Heck algebra. Okay. Heck algebra. Okay, so uh, I, this is a roughly something I want to, I guess, advertising my lectures in particular. With the emphasis of this, uh, the 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 last uh, uh, last last line, and to give you some background, that actually, I as far as I understand, many lectures later on in the summer school actually will uh, be devoted to actually understand the 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 the, the, 
the ideas that appear in the last line. Okay, uh, but uh, I should mention, I will only uh, explain this in, in, in the case two, in some, in some sense. Like case three will be covered later on by a uh, lecture of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Emerton, G, and uh, Hillman. Uh, and for one, I guess, our, I guess it's simply our knowledge is not uh, enough to carry on these uh, ideas. So actually, I want to, one thing I really found really uh, already quite interesting is for real group, the Bernstein Center, some, in some sense, the Bernstein Center of uh, the real group it has not been uh, fully understood. So uh, we are still very far away from even go, uh, go to go to the third uh, stage. Okay, so uh, it's okay for the uh, start from some uh, real content. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so I would talk a little bit about the mismodulized space. I mean, more details. I guess there will be also other lectures later on to uh, develop, like to develop these ideas and talk them in more, much more, I mean, in more details. But uh, I, I think, I guess as I was told, I need to at least uh, give some like sort of impression what what they look like and then live. Or maybe more of a color of some fish. Because, uh, or maybe, maybe Langdon's parameter, I don't know which, which is better. So, uh, so record that we want to, roughly speaking, record. We said in, at least in case two and three, we want to think about Langland's parameters as a as a homo, as a Galois representation from Galois group to some uh, some C group, which you you can simply think about. This is a uh, I mean G O N at the moment, but let me just uh, con consider uh, or maybe maybe let me just write it in this way C group. Uh, up to G hat conjugacy. And uh, uh, so I want to talk, talk a little bit how you could think about such thing as a uh, as a moduli space. And uh, of course, the more details will appear later in different content. So and uh, so the question is why such thing form a moduli space. I guess so. The uh, the the baby idea is uh, if you just think of gamma as uh, some abstract group. And the H is some edge break group okay. over some, let's say, base field K. Maybe maybe I use lambda base ring lambda uh, to lambda denote the coefficient. Then you can 
easily define a space uh, space of homomorphisms from gamma to H parameterizing, uh, I mean, Uh, CG is, uh, is, uh, I actually, I won't uh, really use that much. So, so let me, uh, yeah, maybe po post postpone. Yeah. yeah. I, so you, it's more or less like, uh, you know, G hat, if you think, huh? You, you can think about it as G hat at the moment, actually for, what I'm going to talk about, uh, you can safely replace by G hand. It's, uh, this, uh, it's only important, uh, I think, in, in global number field case and the Piada case. Uh, Is it complex? It's algebraic group over, over lambda. It's some ring, QP or ZP or something. Yeah, so you can define the space parameterizing representation uh, homomorphisms from gamma to H, name, such that, uh, I mean, to, to say a sp space, I mean, I need to specify what, what is value on a K algebra. So it's K algebra is just the considered hom group homomorphism from gamma to HR. Now, R H is the algebraic group. So let's see. So. Uh, where is the K? Where, what is K? You said a K algebra R. Oh, so, sorry, lambda algebra. Sorry. Okay. And the claim is this is actually, a, a, it's always represented by an affine scheme. So the fact is, uh, it's easy to see that this is a affine scheme. Over lambda, and of course it, it points parameter is as it should be parameterizing homomorphisms. Why it's an affine scheme? It's pretty simple. Lambda you just write as a general bunch of generators and the, the relations. What is a homomorphism? You need to send the generators to a generators. Uh, you send generators to some elements here and satisfy certain e equations. So in any case, so the tautological case is gamma is generated by itself. You, I just take the set of generator by gamma itself. So this is basically something inside the H to the lambda. Yeah, it's a big affine scheme and the cut out by certain equations. So it's different affine scheme. So, uh, So for example, let's take some, yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's this other one. Affine scheme comment is because you take H to be an affine. Uh, yeah, a, yeah, affine algebraic group. Sorry, yeah, I, I should know. Yeah, they are linear embedded into G O N. They are always embedded into some G. This is my, yeah. Okay, so uh, so basic example. If gamma is just a Z, well, it's generated by one element. So this is. Just the H itself. Yeah. The case uh, that is sort of important is we consider the following group. This sometimes called the Q-team group. It has two generators, you know, by uh, sigma and the tau. 
such as the uh, sigma tau, sigma inverse is tau to the qth power, where q is some integer, let's see, positive integer. Okay, so in this case, well, this is basically, you just need to specify where generators goes in H, so it's a pairs, H squared, set given by one equation. It's inside the H squared. Okay. Let's also consider, uh, so gamma, if gamma is a finite group, Finite, uh, finite group, actually. And uh, suppose the order of gamma is invertible in lambda. And uh, let me, for simplicity, let me assume lambda is field, see. Okay, uh, for simplicity. Now in this case, it's better to, it's actually easy to describe a home of, this affine scheme modulo the action of H, because I mean, uh, H acts on H by conjugation, so it acts on the set of all homomorphisms by conjugation. And uh, in the case when the, the group order is invertible in lambda, let's say if H is GLN, every representation is semi-simple. So basically there's no really continuous moduli, and this, you can, after modular H, actually it's just the disjoint joint union, or maybe, let's say, algebraic closed fields. So then this is basically all possible uh, homomorphism from this up to conjugacy of point modulo, uh, which, I, which I didn't know about, S, S row, which is a centralizer. Of row in H. So, uh, so you see this group actually already appears somehow in Nunland theory, this group already appears in, like it's in automatically in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, Geometry of this thing. Yeah. So, but the the case is actually more complicated if uh, uh, the order of uh, uh, lambda is not the invertible in lambda. Uh, order of gamma. Let's say if gamma is p and the h, let's say it's just the gm over f p bar. So this then actually, you know, if you just look at this, the, the homomorphism. Uh, H to GM, it's basically the the, the P torsion of GM, because you need to send that element the element to So this is mu P, it's, uh, and the, if you, you can also, the action, GM conjugation action is trivial, so this is like a, basically mu P times BGM. But the, in any case, this is a non-reduced scheme. It has some, not, not like this, it's a point et al. thing. But, uh, okay, so, uh, of course, this is a baby idea, and this is actually considered such things, uh, some quite old idea, like when, in particular, when gamma is like the sur fundamental group of a Riemann surface, uh, people like start character varieties, or so, so forth, actually start this a lot. But uh, but this idea, when you apply it to here, there's a two pr actually two problems. One is actually a Fermilion one, which I'll talk slightly later. And but let me first uh, talk about uh, this. Uh, baby construction. Uh, but uh, let's first talk about uh, uh, some uh, one issue, which actually I 
probably will also appear later in lecture. It's, uh, let's look at example two. Let, let's, let's just look at this, suppose H, see, it's just the GM for simplicity. Okay, so then, uh, then the, the, you know, in this case, this, uh, this guy, it says, say there's two element A, B, A inverse, is B to the Q, so, but uh, because this is already commutative, so it's uh, basically the pairs A, B in H squared, such that B equals B to the Q's power. Okay, so that's, uh, it, this guy is inside the, uh, uh, this two dimensional torus, H squared, but uh, when Q equals one, so this equation is automatic. It's a sort of a redundant equation, yeah, a priori. So you are somehow it's like if Q is not one, it's okay. We are just uh, B must be a Q minus one root of unit in in H. But when Q is one, which won't appear, this example won't appear in in. Uh, uh, in the Galois group, but the, this phenomena will appear. So I just illustrate this uh, phenomena using this example. When Q is X1, this equation is redundant. If you write down the, this scheme, you know, it's given by, you consider the, 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 the ring of uh, two dimensional torus, let me write this coordinate by X and Y. So, and I think about X is coordinate for A, Y is coordinate for uh, B, so or, originally you are quotient out of this G, Y equals Y to the Q, quotient of this ideal. But in this particular, uh, if Q is one, this ideal actually is just the, uh, just the, what's it, zero? You are, you are quotient out of nothing, so you remain, the whole thing is rem, remains. This is actually not, a, not good for some purpose is uh, actually this is that the, this, I mean, we know that the, if your quotient define some, let's see, some variety in some affine space by some equation, if there, if, if you don't get the expected dimension, you are quotient of one equation, you're supposed to get something of dimension one, but if you don't get dimension one, usually there's some like a non, transversal intersection and there should be some derived structure. So there should be derived structure. And this should be actually for taking into account uh, for actually for modern applications. And uh, this is, uh, if you think about this is a, uh, uh, a little bit artificial, actually in example four. I said that this mu p is non-reduced. But if you think about this really a modular space, there should also some hidden derived structure. So here you, you look, it looks like the, the, the dimension is, is correct one. You are quotient the one dimension thing by uh, one equation. But uh, somehow uh, there's still some non-trivial derived structure there. It's, uh, the problem is uh, the presentation of Z ma P as Z ma P Z is not uh, quite good. So, okay. So this is the first uh, issue. So issue problem one. So I just I won't really go to the details of uh, this all this derived stuff. I guess uh, it it will be mentioned I guess at least uh, several times in the conference, but the, in the summer school. But I guess nobody will really. I I don't know. Some some speakers are here. But the, uh, they probably won't really talk about the, what are the derived. Uh, things. So it's like a hidden black box, but. The, I mean, I hope at least I give you a idea here is uh, instead of, if Q is one, instead of just consider this ring, I really need to re remember these two complexes like a 
this ring map to it by zero map, and I think this is sort of some derived ring, and that's some hidden derived structure here. Okay. Okay, the, the second problem too is, uh, the problem too is more Fermilion one. It's, uh, we only wanna, so Galois groups are, are profinite groups. And, uh, and we only wanna, continuous representations plus certain conditions, some other conditions, but the continuous continu continuity is like the, the sort of the first uh, pass you need to satisfy. Okay, so, uh, so in this, so how to solve these two problems? Uh, I mean, how, at least how to solve problem two. Let, let's first look at examples, and the, the examples will suggest uh, an answer. So, uh, yeah, example. So gamma is really just the Galois group of FP which is a profinite completion of Z. Let's it's just, it's just look at this example. Ah, yeah, maybe, maybe before we get the example, actually, let me just actually give a formal definition and then talk about example. So, so then, so maybe we can make it the following definition. So for simplicity, I will assume Actually, first I assume let's say lambda is uh, is uh, is edge break over some base field like because when we are talking about the continuous representation, we need to choose some prime L, so some F L or sigma L to the n, some some torsion ring like, and the lambda is uh, edge break over it. So at least at the moment, I don't want to consider topology on the coefficient. This is uh, the problem. Uh, I mean, this is a point. This, this, I mean, so then definition. So we define. So let's see. Gamma is a profinite group. Then we define all the possible continuous hom the moduli space of sort of continuous homomorphism from gamma some group H. H is still over lambda. I just defined this, uh, I mean, if you think about it, uh, if it's lambda point, it's a continuous map to a prof from profinite group to a discrete group, so it must factor through some finite quotient, yeah? So it's uh, better to, then it's natural actually to define this as uh, uh, some all, all possible homomorphisms that factor through some finite quotient. Where H is inside, this is open normal. You consider all possible finite quotient of lambda and uh, consider the union of uh, one of them. So n notice that uh, if I have a two groups, I have a surjective map from gamma one to gamma two, then I this space H gamma one uh, H into homomorphism of gamma two H this is closed embedding. So I mean basically here you are quotient of more equations than then you define this by more equations than the original thing. Yeah. So in particular I'm mean, talking this guy is defined as a inductive limit of affine scheme, but the, with transition maps to be the closed embeddings. 
So this is actually a, a so-called inaffine skin. So you can think about its inductive limit of affine scheme or think about the ring of regular functions is like a projected limit of ring of regular functions. So it's like a pro, ring of regular functions of pro algebra. So, so then we look at the, okay, so the, I should this definition is good. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe take R to be just this for any, and uh, R is lambda algebra. So this definition is good when lambda is kind of this, this or doesn't have topology, it's, it's okay. And uh, if, you, if you really want to do derived things, this is so even good for uh, derivedly if uh, R is so-called a truncated algebra, like uh, it only has finite homotopy groups, finite many homotopy groups, this is okay. Uh, okay, so, let's, but the, again, I, I, sometimes I, for expert, I sort of mention the possible derived thing, but I want to write anything derived here. So, uh, so let's look at the basic example. So how does this look like? Well, uh, the continuous homomorphism from C hat Let's just consider H to be uh, GM, the simplest group multiplicative type. Then this is basically, it ma must factor through some finite quotient. This is uh, zima N, so I'm taking the union of all N torsion, okay, of this group GM. And uh, uh, if you think about it, actually, if you take n is bigger and big and big enough, it's basically the you consider all possible points. Let's see of uh, g of uh, let's see over f q bar. Let, let's base change this to you know do some base change uh, of formal completion of G M at those points. Some sense. Let, let's see lambda is just. Uh, For simplicity, let me just write in this way. Because basically every point, uh, if people, the points here are always torsions, so every point, so you can always write in this way. Okay, so it's a, uh, so this definition, see, this problem is the space, there's such space, but it doesn't have really nice geometry. It's just the, you take all the points and take its formal completion in GM. So it's a, uh, uh, not the, that interesting. Uh, but the, actually this space does have some geometry. Uh, again, still this example, but I wanna, this is example, but then I wanna probably this is exercise for you. It's for general H, let's say some reductive group. Maybe, let's see. Even in the case H is GO2, this space is already, it does have some geometry. Actually, one can show the following is true. You consider all possible homomorphisms. So, of course, it will, because of continuity, it will basically send the, the generator, one topological generator, to one determined by the image of topological generator. So, it's supposed to be something inside H. Okay, but it won't be H itself. Rather, it will be, has the following funding form. You consider it's H, then H mapped to its GIT quotient. Okay. And then you just take the union of all the GIT co completion of the, uh, the GIT quotient at every point and take its fiber. Let, let's see, lambda. So, so in particular, the picture looks like this. Uh, drawing the picture. It, it does have some geometry. This is a, the, the space H. 
But the, the space is not the H itself. It, the H mapped to the GIT quotient, the H mark H. For each point, you take its, uh, uh, each point here, you take its f formal completion and then take its fiber. So, uh, in other words, the, uh, the, 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 the geometry actually happens, there's some continuous family here, but, the, but the, also, on the other hand, it's also very uh, disconnected on this, fam on this direction. So if you think about this, is actually a semi-simple direction, and this is like the unipotent direction. Uh, such thing really happens, if, for example, if I have two trivial representation of FL and I can consider its extensions, there are basically some A1, A1 family here, so that contributes uh, uh, the continuous thing, but the, still, uh, the, the semi-simple direction is actually almost fixed. There's no way to vary it. And also I want to mention, but it's already slightly better than the usual deform. People study, let's say, frame the deformation ring, which only considers a sort of a com completion at the one point here. Now it already has some geometry, but it's not good enough. The idea is, of course, uh, you notice that uh, this guy sits inside the just, uh, if I ch choose a topological generator, then I just, this guy sits inside here and uh, H. So, because this is a Galois group of a uh, uh, finite field, I have a canonical topological generator, namely Frobenius. So, then maybe we just uh, replace such thing by here. We get uh, actually a really uh, a nice space, just the H itself. Okay, and then it connects different points here. That's kind of the uh, uh, basic idea to construct this modular space. And it actually works in some cases. So let me now state the theorem and uh, uh, then make some comments. Okay. Yes? So which, uh, this embedding is an injection because I mean this continuous homomorphism will be determined by the image of topological generator. <laughs> this one, um, but uh, like Z map to each of, like for example, each of this is basically closed subscheme of GM. You take the unit, it's still closed subscheme of GM. Oh, how do you do this product? H mapped to here by just taking the J. This one? No, no, no. This one, this one, how, this one mapped to here? Correct. This one mapped to here. Because this guy is just the, the union of formal completion at each point. So it sits inside here. Yeah, just per first projection, first projection, yes. Then, then it's not immediately clear perhaps why it's projective. I mean, if you think uh, very simple, uh -oh. right? Because you forget the second. This, this, this is sort of the formally, you know, it's formally completion at each point. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this map is sort of injective. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, 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 sorry. Can you explain a little bit why formal completion here? Why formal completion? Yeah, so this is exercise. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but maybe the better, easier example is HSGM. <laughs> you, can, you can check that. Generate. <laughs> I assign some exercise for you. Okay, uh, yeah, so maybe. Uh. <coughs> 
so it turns out that actually this really works in some cases. So let me take. So again, lambda is just uh, something over FL or, or maybe some torsion ring zima L, some edge break. And uh, I take F is a local field of characteristic P not equal to L or a global function field of characteristic P not equal to L. Okay, so 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 basically this is a uh, like Q QP FP double parenthesis T like equal characteristic mixed characteristic. This is like the function field of uh, algebraic curve. And uh, then you let WF to be the way group. So, so let me just uh, consider the right. The, then I have the Galois group. So, and in the in the in the global case, because we only consider Galois representations unramified almost everywhere. So I just consider Galois group unramified outside S a set of this. And so this. Uh, so I mean, this S means in the in the global case, I will consider this. Otherwise, so. Uh, and the inside here, I take Z, generated by Frobenius. This is so-called the way group. Okay. Let be the way group. Thanks. Okay. Uh, then. So then, the claim is... Uh, then if you consider all possible these homomorphisms from instead of consider Galois group but from the way group to H. Way group is still a topological group. It's a, a sort of a, the kernel is still a profinite group and a map to a Z. So it's kind of a locally profinite group. Okay. And uh, you, you know, the, when you de then you define continuous homomorphism in a similar way, meaning every homomorphism should be trivial over on some open compact open normal subgroup here. So in fact, so the quotient is not going to be finite, but the sort of finite extension by z. There's you are you use the same definition open open normal, but the quotient is not finite anymore. But the, yeah. So then. A priori, then again, it's a union of uh, F, in, inductive limit of affine scheme. Yeah, you you could have this uh, kind of this weird weird picture, like uh, I have some affine scheme and then I take some new potent thickening, 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 and uh, but it turns out uh, this is uh, it's actually it's not that bad. It's uh, a disjoint union. of affine schemes over lambda. So it, you won't uh, really have this kind of this uh, formal directions. It's a, uh, it, so I guess uh, affine schemes over lambda, yeah. That, that's, that, that's, uh, that's a theorem. So, so basically, the basic idea is uh, in this in this particular case. I, I will comment uh, in other situations. So, basic theory, maybe mention is um, once you replace the z hat the, by z, you really get something. Uh, this this kind of bizarre geometry won't appear. You really get something nice. And so, uh, so in particular, so maybe, yeah, let me then make a remark. Uh, where's S? S is a finite set of finite places, let's see. Uh, so S 
is a non-empty set of uh, uh, finite set of places. Of F in the global field case, okay, yeah, and then because uh, you know, as Sophie mentioned at the very beginning, we only want to consider Galois representations that are unramified. Yeah. Everywhere. Uh, so yeah. are the, are the members of the union finite type? Or? Uh, each each is finite type union of F schemes of finite type. Over lambda. Yeah. So, so what happens to because in inertia uh, you have another thing that looks a lot like the hat. That's right. Yeah. So that's that's a. So the question is uh, why this happens? Because I only uh, replace the hat by z in the inertia. The, for example, in the local case, the inertia there's still per finite group, but uh, somehow why such thing didn't happen already? So. I will try to give you a feeling of, I mean, more in the local case, uh, let me just re make a remark. Uh, so, uh, so this is a technical point. Is uh, so for some experts, uh, you what you should think this way. When a group appears a fundamental group of a variety, you usually it's better to consider module of local system on that variety in, instead of uh, just the module of representation of the group. Unless the variety itself is k pi one. Yeah. So, but. When I remove one for S is not empty, actually, there's some implicit, some k pi, k pi 1 of uh, F and algebraic curve, k, k pi 1 property. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> huh? WFS. Yeah, it's not. So it's a. Uh, Galois group is not finite generated, so we, per, it, it's not the. Uh, yeah, for the, in the local case, I think, is it the. Pro finite generated. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, no, no, it's. The global case, if you impose S, it's still. Uh, the you know some like team part is always the finite generated, but the wild part there's a lot of things. Yeah. So that's the reason actually you won't really get uh, just the scheme of finite type over lambda. It's a union, disjoint union of thing. You some like a non finiteness actually has some. So let me make a remark. It's, so actually, when f is uh, is local, and of course again l equals p, more details discussion of this space will appear in the uh, later lecture by that. He will, I guess, he will, as far as I understand, he will give some. Detailed discussion of the geometry, even even not just definition, but just the geometry of this space. This is a local field. Actually, I mean this theorem in the case of local field, it's basically proved by diff almost same time by different group of people. So I guess it's uh, it will like by myself, by uh, that him, uh, Karinzik, Moss, and the Fark Schalter, I think. So. Anyway, so we will see more about this. But the, the basic idea I want to tell you, just answer Sophie's question, why this works in the local case. It's, it's basically the following thing. If, I, you, if you consider the wave group, then it map to the team part of the wave group. You just quotient the wild uh, 
while inertia. And inside here, I can also find some, just some abstract group of inside it, it's this q group containing it. Okay, let me fix an embedding iota, and then I can consider this group, maybe denote by and p. So the whole point is this is a pro p group, and we're considering ma l or l r representation. So like l when l is not p, some basic example I explained before, like the, if you have finite group whose order is invertible in the coefficient field. The, actually the behavior is very nice. It just becomes a disjointed union of re representations. So that gi gives you create a lot of uh, connect components, but they are disjoint union and nice. And the here, it turns out what happens is, although you consider the all possible continuous representation, there's still topology here, the inertia. This is like the extension of Z by product of Z uh, L well, twisted by one with L not equal to P. But the, it turns out the if you consider continuous representation of this, it's already the same as uh, uh, abstract representation of this group. So that uh, explains, so basically, the whole point is the continuous homomorphism, this to H, is when you restrict And this is, we know, is basically an affine scheme. So this is kind of a... So you don't take embedding, embedding this, or you So I, cho I, I choose, yes, uh, let, me, let me choose some bit. I, I wrote iota ah, before. Like, like J, let's see, some, some embedding. I mean, but of course this, this presentation is a little bit um, difficult. It, it's, it depends on the choice of the generator, so a priori, if you just define some space like this, it depends on the choice of generator. This is a canonical, but uh, it turns out, this definition is canonical, but turns out they are the same. Like this kind of phenomenon won't happen for, uh, for WF. Okay? So that is sort of explained in the local case, it's okay. In the global case, actually, it's much deeper. This, the reason it works is uh, it uh, relies on some, uh, so in the global case, this is a, the, the, I mean, this is basically explains the reason it works, rough idea, why it works in the local case, with more details appearing in that lecture. Global case, this, the reason is much deeper. It's a, the theorem actually, it's, a, it's not just the, uh, it's not a purely Galois theoretical representation, uh, it actually uses automorphic Langlands correspondence for function field. More precisely, it uses uh, Dian's conjecture proved by uh, Dennis Gatesbury. Okay, so this is uh, some something. Uh, so relies on Dian's conjecture proved by Dennis Gatesbury. So it's actually not a, it use, one needs some Langlands correspondence as input. Langlands correspondence for GON as input for this. So. Langlands correspondence modulo L. Uh, yes, but he proved like this geometrical Langlands for un, everywhere unramified situation. It's, it's enough for, for, for deduce the answer conjecture. But this time there's also this, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it did. Uh, no, no, I think it's, huh? The, oh, to what? S is any non-empty finite set place. Yeah, any. Uh, S cannot pass pieces over L. This is a function field. Uh, this function field, yeah, yeah, function field. So now it comes this remark. This is sort of a miraculously works if you just uh, just replace z hat by z in the Frobenius. But the, the same idea does does not work when p equals l. Okay, so if you can consider 
uh, L is the, the same as the residual characteristic P. You can still consider representing a wave group, okay? And uh, you define it, then it's not gonna be something like that. It still have some like weird structure, like some very formal directions. Uh, I guess uh, probably Toby will give some, in their lectures, they will give some example even probably to why it doesn't work in that case. So, uh, doesn't work when F local and, uh, oh, okay. so when it, when it's some further, some new ideas, and that's uh, when construct the, now they so-called the Hamilton G stack in that case. So, it will contain such thing as a, as a form of closed substack inside it, but uh, it will sort of connect something deep. So basically, in this case situation, this is still not good enough to connect the points, but uh, you need better idea. But uh, this is still reasonable. Uh, but the, this guy, I mean, I want to see, actually this definition, if you're in the global number field case, maybe I not mention, uh, write it, but I would just say, if you're in the gl global number field case, you, if you just consider the Galois representation defined in the continuous home of, it's still a reasonable object, although it's not gonna be a union of scheme, it's, it's still have indirection, but uh, somehow uh, still reasonable to consider, but uh, I won't uh, talk about that. Okay, so uh, I give a, I have like, I start from, I think from 11.30, that time there. So I, I, I think a cup, yeah, cup of minutes. So, hmm? Supposedly 11.05. Oh, 11.05. So how, how? Twelve minutes? No, ten, 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 ten minutes. minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay. So, right. Uh, yeah. So now with this space, uh, as I said, there's uh, more details of uh, or different version of this kind of space will appear in later lectures. So I just give you some feeling of how do they look like. But uh, with uh, this theorem available, then you can just uh, define the, the long lens param space of long lens parameter by specializing the case is uh, so. Oh, yeah, I want to mention. Yeah, maybe I, I should mention one more thing. Okay because it's kind of important. Oh, I should, sorry. It's the, uh, If you just consider this guy, uh, this Galois way group, S over H, you take the limit over O zima L, you let, let the lambda to vary. Those are, these are affine scheme, each one is a union of affine scheme over zima L to the N, you take the union, a priori you get some formal affine scheme over ZL, but actually it can be, extends to union, disjoint union. Of affine schemes over ZL, and uh, then uh, whose, uh, whose QP points will give you the, the usual uh, continuous, uh, you know, Z, ZL points give you the usual uh, continuous zeolatic representation. But, uh, but this is a, uh, at the level of classical moduli space, it's not that difficult to, 
C, but the derived way is quite involved. Okay, uh, but again, this thing doesn't work in this case, in the, in the L equals P case. Okay, so. Now uh, we can. Now, if I have some G over F, so F is uh, in this case is a local residual characteristic P or a global function. Characteristic P. Then, uh, and then we can define the so-called the stack of moduli space of Langlands parameters. I, sometimes I maybe write g hat of f, and maybe a, for simplicity, the assuming to split, because uh, uh, so then I just uh, consider all possible homomorph continuous homomorphisms from the way group. Right? And maybe at S, if you want to, it's unramified uh, outside the set of uh, to G hat, modulo G hat. Uh, and uh, G hat, G is defined over some local field. And the G hat, I want to define over lambda, some co coefficient ring. OK, so. As I said, in this two situation, uh, the uh, passing to, it's not that important to use a C group. So let's just, uh, for simplicity, stick to G hat. Okay, so then we have the, it's a stack, stack quotient. So this is moduli stack. Stack. Okay. So now, uh, at least I think I can finish with stating the now the idea of uh, one idea, which of uh, so we want to consider as I said we want to consider the category of coherent shifts on it. So we want to let's maybe move to two some coherent shifts. Then the state at least the conjecture, and to talk about more about it. So now we. We first assume f is local. So, uh, so and uh, so I let uh, this rep of gf, the category of smooth representations of gf. Yeah, let me assume for lambda is uh, either some like FP bar, some fields, let's see, or uh, QL bar, it doesn't matter. So consider this category of smooth representations. So it uh, contains a full subcategory. Uh, uh, as I said before, previously we basically consider the set of irreducible representations, but now we want to move to categories. So we consider this uh, full subcategory generated by just a full subcategory, generated by, generated actually meaning under finite co-limits. Limits. Uh, by those, those appearing as compact induction, open compact. So uh, if, if lambda is a field of characteristic zero, all these objects are projective in here by probably some res result of Bernstein. And so these are like sort of projective generators. So actually the whole category is sort of the inc uh, incompletion of it. If lambda is finite coefficient, the situation is more complicated. Uh, so then the 
And the, let me finish with this conjecture and talk more about it. So then the conjecture appearing actually is this big idea already appears by many people some time ago and uh, actually formulated by uh, precisely formulated by various people like a human, myself, maybe some uh, some other like I don't Ben Zvi, uh, Nathan Hume and the Chen. And, and later on, actually, this also there's a bit later on. I'll talk about there's some even more general thing like this categorical local lines by Fragen Schultz and uh, some version by myself. So the conjecture is: uh, let me assume G quasi split for simplicity, and uh, equipped with a pinning. Okay, pinning. For real, then there exists a fully faithful embedding from this category to the category of a coherent shifts on this guy. And uh, which I know probably by A, this functor. Some kind of A stands for automorphic, but anyway, it's just notation. So, there, of course, there's much more, uh, you need to say a lot more than just to say there's a fully faithful embedding, but that will be discussed next time. Okay, so stop.